Ragna. Ay, ay, ay. Han är han. Nästa gång kan vi vara. Doctors have been saying it forever. Let's take a look. But they've never actually been able to do it like this. Let's take a look. V-Scan from GE Healthcare, a pocket-sized imaging device that will help change the way doctors see patients. That's better health for more people. Contrary to popular belief, even though doctors go through years and years of training, we are just mere mortals like you. And we struggle every day to get the diagnosis right. You see, when a doctor evaluates a patient, we perform the physical examination. It's the laying on of the hands, and it's been going on for over 2,000 years since the time of Hippocrates. And we're trying to figure out what could be wrong with the organs that lie beneath your skin. And really, other than the stethoscope that came along in 1816, there really hasn't been anything that's come along to change the way we take care of patients at the bedside. But in 1965, the world witnessed the birth of ultrasound right there on the cover of Life magazine. But these initial machines were enormous. They took 10 minutes to boot up, they weighed hundreds of pounds, and they were very expensive, and therefore, they were not very portable. But just look over the last 30 years how portable these machines have become. I mean, some of them run on a battery. You can fit them right in your pocket. And this has enabled us to perform ultrasound now on all kinds of new settings and locations. When we use it in this way, we term it point of care ultrasound because we can use it anywhere a patient is being taken care of. Now that might be in the ER or the OR or the ICU, but it could be in a really far flung place like up at the space station or on a cruise ship or even in a remote African village. Now currently, the other way to look into the body is with a CT scan. And a CT scan is just like an X-ray, except instead of just getting one X-ray, it's like 500 X-rays of radiation. Our project was trying to bring ultrasound services to Sandown Health Center. This is traditionally a hospital-based service, but it does, with all services, require the patient to go to the hospital, have a scan, and return back to the community. Scanners are notoriously expensive, and we thought probably beyond our reach, but a very successful community appeal raised £30,000. Every GP in the partnership now can use the ultrasound machine. So we now have a weekly sonography service where the sonographer from St Mary's comes to Sandown Health Centre to a pre-booked clinic, takes the digital images back to St Mary's and provides us with reports. The outreach service has been running for six months and in that time we've had two notable cases uh, where a person with severe abdominal pain, uh, we assumed was gallstones because of the history, but in fact um, there were no gallstones and looking further we found that this was something very serious and they were flown to Southampton, their life was saved. And the second person we found a large aneurysm on the scan. Um, the other really positive thing about this is that this has been surprisingly easy to set up and there is hope now that this will be rolled out to other surgeries on the island in the fullness of time. Like most family physicians I do a little bit of everything. We see all types of patients. We work in training third year medical students and work with the residents and family practice. I am excited about adding uh, the bedside ultrasound as a way of um, managing risk and letting people know that they may have something that could be catastrophic that they're not aware of. Particularly what we wanted to accomplish would be to be able to do right upper quadrant ultrasounds to rule out gallstones as abdominal pain is, is a very common presenting complaint for our patients here in the office. I do a lot of injections with uh, shoulders and knees. Recent training with the ultrasound in those areas it seems to be pretty straightforward and uh, even though you have good experience, the ultrasound helps to guide you to the right joint space or, or area for injection. Let's see how pulse check checks are done ACLS style. Okay, two minutes are up. Okay, let's hold compression and check, check a rhythm. We have a rhythm. 
Uh, can I get someone to please check a pulse? Not sure if I feel one. Yeah, I feel one. I feel one. Nope, I don't feel one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel one. Yeah, I think there's a strong result. I'm not sure. I, I can't wait. really feel much here. So wait, just, well, I, just to clarify, do we feel a pulse? No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's get back to the POCUS and uh, see how you can actually use POCUS on the, the heart and on the carotid to help you out here. So most of us are pretty familiar with looking at the heart with POCUS. And if you see a heart that looks like this in a pulseless patient, the patient's likely perfusing. And CPR is probably unnecessary. Giving megadoses of epinephrine is probably harmful. All right, makes sense. So what you're doing there, you're, you're adjusting the epi based on like a two-second look at the heart. Exactly. Okay. And in contrast to the clip we just watched with the vigorously beating heart, if you see a heart that looks like this, that's barely moving or not moving at all, it's time to immediately get back on the chest and resume your compressions. All right, so what about looking at the carotid for, for a pulse, Jordan? So in this clip, you can see pulsations in the carotid, which basically means the patient has a pulse. And it's a lot easier to see a pulse than to feel a pulse. And if you're not sure what you're seeing, you can always put your color on like that, and you can actually see flow within the carotid artery pretty easily. And in contrast, here's another patient in cardiac arrest, and we put the probe on the neck, and even with minimal probe pressure, we can see the carotid completely collapses. This patient has no perfusion. You know right away you need to get back and resume your chest compressions. Okay, see, so let's hold compressions. Okay, we have an organized rhythm. Okay, Craig, do you have any cardiac activity? We do have some cardiac activity. Okay, see, so let's hold off on CPR right now. Push 10 mics of FBIV and then start a 10 mic per minute infusion. Craig, could you do a full rush protocol for me? Okay. So the heart looks like poor LV function, Ten no mics. signs of right heart strain, FBI. and no pericardial effusion. Great. Thanks, Hugh. Okay. Good lung sliding bilaterally, sure. no pneumothorax. Can you check the IVC for me? Yep. FB infusion's running. Thank okay, you. the IVC looks flat. So can we get a 500cc bolus in this patient right now? Okay, no free fluid in the abdomen and the aorta looks fine. All right. Oh, and I feel a carotid pulse. Okay, so it looks like we had a patient in cardiogenic shock. Okay, after we get an ECG, can we notify the cath lab and let them know we have a post-rest patient coming up with an ETA of about five minutes? Okay, we'll do.